This slide is of cleidocranial dysostosis. It is a birth defect, autosomal dominant, RUNX2 gene is affected, which is involved in the formation of bone. Here, the clavicle is typically poorly developed or it is absent, which allows the shoulders to be brought close to each other. So there is cranial deformity as well as other symptoms are prominent forehead, wide set eyes, abnormal teeth, flat nose, and it is caused by defective intramembranous ossification. If the clavicle is completely absent, it causes hypermobility of shoulders, and if it is partially absent, it may cause nerve damage. Mandible is prognathic due to hypoplasia of maxilla. Fontanelles may fail to close or may close late. Bones and joints are underdeveloped. Permanent teeth include uh, supernumerary teeth and it is treated by uh, surgical correction is done to treat the deformity. Uh, craniofacial surgery will correct the skull defect. In case of coxa vera, it is treated by uh, corrective femoral osteotomies. Then clavicular fragments are excised to treat the nerve irritation. This slide shows fracture at the distal end of the radius. So first uh, figure is of Coley's fracture and second figure is of Smith's fracture. So when a person falls on outstretched hands as shown in first figure in case of Coley's fracture, the scaphoid and lunate bones, the carpal bones will transfer force over the distal end of radius and there is dorsal angulation or upward angle known as dinner fork deformity in Coley's fracture. Other causes of uh, this fracture are osteoporosis, trauma, elderly people, low muscle mass or uh, decrease uh, in, uh, in decreased level of vitamin D or calcium. So here uh, splint or cast is used to treat and regular x-rays are taken uh, to see the normal healing process and patient has pain, tenderness, swelling, bruising when he attempts to flex the wrist. Extensor pollicis longus tendon may also rupture and late complication is wrist stiffness and uh, the second figure is of Smith's fracture. So it occurs when a person falls on uh, bent or flexed back of the wrist. So here the distal end of the radius is displayed, uh, displaced in the direction of palm of the hand and it may lead to carpal tunnel syndrome and compress median nerve as complication. Here the person presents with pain, swelling, tenderness over wrist and it is treated with immobilization with splint or uh, cast. And in severe cases, close reduction and surgery is done. Here, uh, the main difference between Coley's fracture and Smith's fracture is that uh, Smith's fracture is volar displacement uh, fracture. Means uh, there is uh, displacement of the distal end of a radius towards the palm. Uh, where the uh, fragment of radius that is broken off projects towards the palmar side of the hand. While Coley's fracture results in dorsal displacement causing bone fragments to bend towards the back of the hand. This slide is of carcinoma breast. So the upper outer quadrant of breast is frequent site of carcinoma. Cancer cells infiltrate suspensory ligament, so breast becomes fixed, it is not mobile. And contraction of ligament causes retraction or puckering of the skin. Infiltration and fibrosis of lactiferous duct causes the nipple to retract. Obstruction of superficial lymph vessels uh, by the cancer cells produce edema of the skin and it gives rise to pude orange appearance. And there is communication of superficial lymphatics of breast across midline. 
so the uh, there is spread of the cancer from one breast to other through lymph vessels metastasis may occur to liver pelvis secondaries in the liver are uh, secondaries in the ovary are known as krukenberg's tumor the veins draining breast communicates with vertebral venous plexus of veins it is also known as batson's plexus so through these communications cancer can uh, spread to the vertebrae and to the brain so self examination of mammary gland is only the way for uh, early diagnosis this slide is of mammography so mammography is the process of using low energy x rays to examine human breast for diagnosis screening and early detection of breast cancers through uh detection of microcalcifications ultrasound ductography positron emission mammography magnetic resonance imaging these are all adjuncts to mammography mammography results are expressed in uh, by rads assessment so there is a score from 1 to 5 1 is normal 2 is benign 3 indeterminate fourth suspicious and fifth is malignancy benign tumors are seen as well circumscribed uh, lesions in the mammography whereas malignant tumors have irregular indistinct speculative margins this slide is of winging of scapula so injury to long thoracic nerve of bells or paralysis of serratus anterior muscle produces winging of scapula causes are sudden pressure on shoulder from above or carrying heavy loads on the shoulder here the deformity seen is uh, excessive prominence of medial border and inferior angle of the scapula normally the pull of serratus anterior muscle keeps the medial border of scapula in proximation with the thoracic wall the disability seen here is loss of pushing and punching movement and overhead abduction when a person attempts to push or punch or uh, do overhead abduction then the inferior angle and medial border of the scapula becomes prominent and it is known as winging of scapula In this slide, we can see the cause of injury to the upper trunk and to the lower trunk of brachial plexus. So, in the upper half of the slide, we can see the causes of injury to the upper trunk of brachial plexus. So, uh, if there is undue separation of the head from the shoulder, which is commonly encountered in birth injury or fall. on the shoulder or during anesthesia results in upper trunk uh, injury that is known as urbs paralysis and in the lower part of this figure we can see the causes of lower trunk brachial plexus injury so if there is undue abduction of the arm as in uh, clutching something with the hands after fall from a height or uh, sometimes in birth injury it results in lower uh, trunk brachial plexus injury which is also known as clumkes paralysis right shows injury to the upper trunk of brachial plexus known as urbs paralysis so in the first diagram we can see one region of the upper trunk of brachial plexus where six nerves are meeting so this point is known as urbs point there is a root of c5 c6 suprascapular nerve nerve to subclavius and anterior and posterior division so all these six nerves meet at a point called urbs point and if there is injury at this point of the upper trunk it results in urbs paralysis so in previous slide we have seen the causes are mainly undue separation of head from the shoulder which is commonly encountered in birth injury fall on shoulder or during anesthesia the nerve roots involved are c5 and c6 
muscles paralyzed are biceps brachii deltoid brachialis brachioradialis and uh, supraspinatus infraspinatus and supinator are partly affected the deformity seen here is the arms hang by the side it and they are adducted and medially rotated forearm is extended and pronated and this deformity is known as policeman's tip hand or waiter's tip deformity or porter's tip hand the disability seen here or the movements which are lost are abduction and lateral rotation of the arm at shoulder joint flexion and supination of the forearm biceps and supinator jerk are lost then sensations are lost over a small area over lower part of deltoid slide we can see injury to the lower trunk of brachial plexus it is known as klumpke's paralysis its causes are undue abduction of the arm and uh, nerve roots involved are mainly t8 and partly c8 all the intrinsic muscles of the hand and ulnar flexors of the wrist and fingers are affected as they are supplied by t1 and c8 root deformity seen here is claw hand so claw hand due to unopposed action of long flexors and extensors of the finger um, in claw hand there is hyper extension at metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at interphalangeal joint the disability seen here is biceps and supinator jerk are lost complete claw hand uh, is there as c8 and t1 are involved the cutaneous anesthesia and analgesia is seen along ulnar border of forearm and hand also due to involvement of sympathetic ganglion or first uh, thoracic sympathetic ganglion is also known as stellate ganglion so as uh, the t1 is injured proximal to the white ramus communicans uh, there will be horner syndrome that is inophthalmos ptosis meiosis anhydrosis and loss of cilio spinal reflex ptosis means drooping of eyelid meiosis is constriction of pupil anhydrosis is dry eye inophthalmos is a uh, sinking of eyeball and there is loss of cilio spinal reflex so this is all because of injury to the sympathetic fibers of head and neck that leave the spinal cord through stellate ganglion that is t1 then vasomotor changes are seen due to again sympathetic involvement the skin area with sensory loss is warm due to arteriolar dilatation and it is dry uh, because there is absence of sweating and uh, trophic changes are seen only in long standing case of paralysis there will be dry scaly skin and the nails will crack easily with atrophy at the pulp of fingers slide is of saturday night palsy when a person sits for prolonged period in armchair it compresses the radial nerve in axilla similarly if there is prolonged use of crutches it leads to crutch paralysis in both these conditions the radial nerve is injured at axilla and its effects are loss of extension of elbow due to paralysis of triceps loss of extension of wrist due to paralysis of extensors of forearm and it particularly uh, presents with the clinical feature known as wrist drop wrist drop occurs due to paralysis of extensors of the wrist supplied by posterior interosseous branch of radial nerve and there will be unopposed action of flexors of the wrist so wrist is in flexed position supination is also not possible due to paralysis of supinator and uh, sensory losses there over the posterior surface of lower part of arm and narrow strip over uh, the back of the forearm and over the dorsum of first second and third metacarpals and also corresponding proximal and middle phalanx 
there will be loss of triceps and supinator reflex also so in brief saturday night palsy is the lesion of radial nerve at axilla and it uh, affects the extensors of arm as well as forearm resulting in wrist drop in this slide we can see compression of median nerve in carpal tunnel so the carpal tunnel is osseo fibrous tunnel between the carpal bones and uh, flexor retinaculum of the wrist this restricted space provides passage to long flexor tendons along uh, with their synovial sheath and median nerve also passes through the carpal tunnel and there are common uh, conditions or uh, the causes of compression of median nerve in this carpal tunnel are tendosynovitis then uh, bony encroachment as seen in osteoarthritis or uh, lunate dislocation myxedema pregnancy hypothyroidism all these conditions result in fluid accumulation and weight gain so these are all causes of carpal tunnel syndrome the presenting symptoms are painful paresthesia and numbness affecting uh, palmar side of the radial 3 and half digits and pain and paresthesia can be relieved by shaking the hands wasting and weakness of thinner muscles is also seen as they are supplied by median nerve and loss of sensation or hypostasia to light touch and pin prick over palmar aspect of radial 3 and half digits is there here we have to note that the skin over the thinner eminence is not affected there is no sensory loss of the skin over thinner eminence as it is supplied by palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve which arises proximal to carpal tunnel nerve conduction studies are done to confirm the diagnosis again there are some important uh, signs that we should know in carpal tunnel syndrome there is tinnel sign it is an indication when the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome are reproduced with percussion over palmar aspect of the wrist uh, distal to the skin crease and felen sign is indication when the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome are reproduced when the patient is asked to flex both the wrist against each other for 1 minute median nerve is also known as eye of the hand because it provides uh, the primary touch input to the brain and uh, there is again syndrome called pronator syndrome the median nerve is entrapped between the two heads of pronator teres and uh, then there is uh, other syndrome known as uh, cervical radiculopathy so in both these conditions the median nerve is trapped and the symptoms are similar to that of carpal tunnel syndrome so tinnel sign felen sign will help in diagnosing the carpal tunnel syndrome this slide is of claw hand uh, so it is complete claw hand caused by combined lesion of median nerve and ulnar nerve at elbow it is produced by lesion of medial cord of the brachial plexus and uh, lower trunk of the brachial plexus so the uh, deformity here is hyper extension of the wrist due to paralysis of flexors of the wrist and unopposed action of extensors of wrist then there will be hyper extension of metacarpophalangeal joints due to paralysis of lumbricals and uh, there is flexion of interphalangeal joint due to again paralysis of lumbricals and interosseae so this is about a complete claw hand in which the median nerve and ulnar nerve both are affected in case of incomplete claw hand where only ulnar nerve is affected there will be hyper extension at metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at interphalangeal joint involving only ring finger and uh, little finger so medial two fingers are only involved 
and uh, sensory loss is also confined to medial one third of the palm and medial one and half finger then we can also see vasomotor changes and trophic changes due to involvement of sympathetic innervations this slide is of frozen shoulder so it is a clinical condition uh, characterized by pain and restriction or uniform limitation of all the movements of shoulder joint and it occurs due to shrinkage of capsule of shoulder joint and it is also known as adhesive capsulitis so in this uh, pathology the two layers of synovial membrane uh, become adherent to each other and the patient is mostly 40 to 60 years of age and complains of uh, progressive increasing pain in the shoulder and there is stiffness in the joint and restriction of all the movements particularly external rotation abduction and medial rotation and as the contribution of shoulder joint is reduced the patient shows altered scapulohumeral rhythm due to excessive use of scapular motion and uh, while they are performing overhead flexion or abduction and the surrounding muscles undergo disuse atrophy so uh, this disease is mostly self limiting and patient recovers spontaneously in about one or two years and uh, physiotherapy also gives good results deltoid muscle is commonly used to administer intramuscular injections as it is easy to expose the needle is injected in the central thick portion of the deltoid muscle above the armpit about approximately 2 inch below the acromial process and the, uh, we should not inject too high near the acromial process as it may injure the axillary nerve and injury to the axillary nerve will cause uh, paralysis of deltoid muscle there will be atrophy and loss of round contour of the shoulder also the skin covering inferior region of the deltoid is known as regimental badge area and it is innervated by superior lateral cutaneous branch of axillary nerve so in case of injury to axillary nerve during intramuscular injection there will be sensory loss over the regimental badge area this slide is of shoulder dislocation shoulder joint is most mobile joint it is multi axial joint and wide range of movement is possible but the mobility compromises its stability shallowness of glenoid fossa of the scapula and lack of support uh, provided by the weak ligaments make this joint unstable the strength is provided to the joint by the tendons of rotators cuff which is formed by subscapularis in front supraspinatus superiorly infraspinatus and teres minor uh, posteriorly and the tendon of these muscles are fused to the underlying capsule of the shoulder joint and these tendons form rotators cuff and strengthen the joint the joint is least supported inferiorly and uh, now coming to the dislocation of shoulder joint there are three types of dislocation anterior posterior and inferior anterior dislocation is most common uh, so if there is sudden violence applied on the humerus with the joint fully abducted it tilts the humerus head downwards on the inferior uh, weak part of the capsule which tears the uh, capsule and the humeral head comes uh, to the inferior of the glenoid fossa during this movement the acromion has acted as a fulcrum and the strong flexors and adductors of the shoulder joint now usually pull the humeral head forward and upwards in the subcoracoid position and again uh, the the head of the humerus will lie anterior to the glenoid fossa in the space between anterior or uh, we can say superior and middle uh, band of the glenohumeral 
ligament and that space is known as space of Richards and uh, second type is posterior dislocation it is rare and it is caused by direct violence to the front of joint on inspection the patient with shoulder dislocation uh, shows a rounded appearance of shoulder uh, is lost because the greater tuberosity of the humerus is no longer bulging laterally beneath the deltoid uh, muscle and um, the third variety is subglenoid displacement of the head uh, it may even get displaced to the quadrangular space and it can cause damage to the axillary nerve and uh, it may cause paralysis of the deltoid muscle and loss of skin sensation over the lower half of deltoid and uh, downward displacement of the humerus can also stretch and damage the radial nerve ganglion cyst or ganglia are small solid spherical swellings produced due to tendon synovial outpouching or uh, sometimes due to mucinous degeneration of fibrous tissue and they are more common along the dorsal aspect of the wrist joint these are non cancerous lumps and uh, they are painful at time if they press the nearby nerves and if it causes pain or if there is restriction of joint movements then the doctor may suggest to drain the cyst with the needle or uh, treat it surgically when we extend our forearm completely we can see that the forearm is not in straight line with the arm but it makes an angle with the arm because forearm is slightly uh, deviated on the lateral side and this deviation produces an angle known as carrying angle and there are some important anatomical factors uh, responsible for producing this carrying angle now if we consider the lower end of the humerus and go from medial to lateral side we know there is medial epicondyle then the trochlea has got medial and lateral flange then comes the capitulum and lateral epicondyle so the trochlea its medial flange is 6 millimeter below the lateral flange and second important factor is superior articular surface of coronoid process of ulna is placed obliquely to the long axis of ulna so because of these two reasons carrying angle is produced and uh, now this extends the ulna outwards and therefore the arm uh, forearm the forearm is slightly laterally deviated and it produces an angle with the arm it varies between 5 to 15 degree now again here it is important to mention that in some textbook they have given carrying angle uh, to be 5 to 15 degree and in some texts they say carrying angle varies from 163 to 165 degree uh, so we consider 5 to 15 degree as appropriate the normal carrying angle uh, the long axis of the elbow joint is transverse between radius and humerus but it is oblique between ulna and humerus and the carrying angle diminishes when the forearm is pronated or flexed and uh, again the carrying angle is more pronounced in females than in males because the females have wider pelvis and in order to avoid rubbing of the hip by the forearm while carrying some weight in their hand they have uh, more carrying angle compared to the males and if the carrying angle is increased more than the normal uh, angle it is known as cubitus vulgus and uh, if the carrying angle is decreased it is known as cubitus varus so common uh, cause is supracondylar fracture and in case of cubitus varus the the supracondylar fracture leads to decrease in the angle and uh, the deformity is known as gun stock deformity so the angle may be disturbed by supracondylar fracture of the humerus and it is common in children slide is of subacromial bursitis subacromial bursa is located below the acromion and above supraspinatus muscle 
एंड दिस इज द लार्जेस्ट बरसा ऑफ आर बॉडी द बरसा फैसिलिटेट्स मूवमेंट ऑफ डेल्टॉइड मसल ओवर द फाइब्रस कैप्सूल ऑफ शोल्डर जॉइंट एंड सुपरा स्पाइनाइटिस टेंडन इन केस ऑफ बर्स सब एक्रोमियल बर्साइटिस देर इज इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ द बरसा ड्यू टू इरीटेशन कॉज बाय इनफ्लेम्ड सुपरा स्पाइनाइटिस टेंडन एंड एज लॉन्ग एज द शोल्डर जॉइंट इज एडक्टेड देर इज नो पेन बिकॉज इन दिस पोजिशन द इनफ्लेम्ड बरसा इज अवे फ्रॉम एक्रोमियल प्रोसेस बट pain occurs when there is abduction because the supra spinatus tendon comes in contact with inferior surface of acromion and um, the inflamed bursa slips under the coracoacromial arch and it gets impinged between supra spinatus and acromion and uh, to diagnose the condition that is subacromial bursitis there is jobin sign in subacromial bursitis pain is elicited when the deltoid is pressed below the acromial process when the arm is adducted but in abducted arm the pain is not elicited by pressure on that point because bursa slips underneath the acromial process so this is known as jobin sign painful arc syndrome is also known as impingement syndrome it is clinical condition in which the tendons of rotator cuff muscles are irritated and inflamed as they pass through subacromial space so the patient will experience pain during mid range abduction as we know the shoulder can abduct from 0 to 180 degree so overhead abduction is possible and uh, in case of painful arc syndrome there will be pain during mid range abduction from 60 degree to 120 degree and there is no pain during initial and terminal stage causes of painful arc syndrome are there can be tear or inflammatory degeneration of supra spinatus tendon or subacromial bursitis or uh, there can be contusion or uh, fracture of greater tubercle of humerus and it is treated by giving rest and avoiding overhead abduction anti inflammatory drugs and analgesics steroids are also given surgical treatment is rotator cuff tra uh, tendon transfer and uh, tendon grafting our nerve passes posterior to the medial epicondyle of humerus so if the posterior medial aspect of the elbow is banged against a hard object it may cause temporary ulnar nerve damage and it results in a tingling sensation radiating to the ulnar side of the forearm and hand because of these sensations in the area of the elbow it is often known as funny bone or crazy bone this slide there are two figures first figure is of pulled elbow and second uh, figure is of student's elbow or minor's elbow so in first figure of pulled elbow we can see a small preschool child uh, pulled by their parents to know this condition pulled elbow we should know the anatomical basis of this clinical condition so as we know the head of the radius is held in radial notch of ulna by tough annular ligament if we see in adults it is well developed and it is funnel shaped but in case of young children it is poorly developed and it is vertical in shape and therefore when a child is held uh, through or uh, when he is pulled up uh, when the forearm is pronated then the head of the radius slips out partially from the annular ligament and it results in pulled elbow or subluxation of radial head so it can be incomplete dislocation of head of radius and here the child complains of pain and limitation of supination reduction is done easily by applying direct pressure posteriorly on the head of radius and simultaneously supinating and extending the forearm and uh, the second slide here we can see is of student's elbow or minor's elbow 
so it is a clinical condition in which inflammation of subcutaneous olecranon bursa occurs so here uh, it causes a round fluctuating painful swelling of about 1 inch or so uh, and in circumference over the olecranon so the inflammation of bursa occurs due to repeated friction as it occurs in students who read for long hours with the head supported by hand and elbow elbow means mainly the olecranon process resting on the table or there can be trauma during uh, fall on elbows or infection from abrasion of skin covering the olecranon process so the second figure is of students elbow or it is also known as minors elbow and this condition occurs due to subcutaneous olecranon bursitis in this slide we can see two figures first is of tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis and second is golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis so uh, in tennis elbow if there is repeated or violent extension of wrist with forearm pronated as required during backhand strokes in lawn tennis it may cause pain and tenderness over the lateral epicondyle of humerus and this lateral epicondylitis is known as tennis elbow the pain is generally uh, occurring on extension of elbow when the forearm is pronated and it is mostly due to sprain of uh, radial collateral ligament or tearing of fibers of extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle or there can be inflammation of bursa underneath the extensor carpi radialis brevis or there can be strain or tear of common extensor origin so the medical term for tennis elbow is lateral epicondylitis that is inflammation of tissue surrounding lateral epicondyle and tennis elbow is more common cause of elbow pain in patients uh, attending orthopedic clinic the second figure is of golfer's elbow so all the five superficial flexors of the forearm namely pronator teres flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum superficialis all these muscles have common flexor origin from medial epicondyle of the humerus so if uh, there is repetitive use of superficial flexors of the forearm as uh, as observed while playing golf uh, it strains the common flexor origin and there is inflammation of medial epicondyle so it is also known as medial epicondylitis and it is characterized by pain on the medial side of elbow so the second slide is of golfer's elbow median cubital vein is most preferred vein for venipuncture so the medial cubital vein is the vein of choice for intravenous injections for withdrawing uh, blood from the donors or for cardiac catheterization because it is fixed by perforators and it does not slip away during uh, piercing so when the median cubital nerve is absent basilic vein is preferred over cephalic vein because basilic vein uh, uh, drains into the axillary vein in straight path whereas cephalic vein bends acutely to drain into the axillary vein thus median cubital vein is the vein of choice for venipuncture slide is of allen's test so the allen's test is used to check the patency of ulnar and radial arteries so first uh, compress the radial artery in front of wrist and ask the patient to make a tight fist this will close off superficial and deep palmar arches consequently the skin of the palm becomes cold and white when the patient is asked to open the hand blood will quickly flow into the arches through the ulnar artery and the skin of the palm now becomes warm and pink this suggests that the ulnar artery is patent in the same way patency of radial artery can be checked by compressing the ulnar artery so this is known as allen's test
this slide there are three figures so the first figure is of facial spaces of the palm second figure shows the incisions for drainage of abscess of facial spaces of palm means the infection of the facial spaces of palm and the third uh, figure is of felon or we say vit, uh, vitlo or uh, pulp space infection so first we will see the spaces facial spaces of the palm normally these facial spaces are potential spaces filled with loose connective tissue and they are uh, clinically important because their boundaries may limit spread of infection in the palm uh, the first is triangular palmar aponeurosis it fans out from the lower border of flexor retinaculum and from its medial border a fibrous septa passes downwards and is attached to the anterior border of fifth metacarpal as we can see in the figure medial to the septum is facial compartment containing three hypothenar muscle this compartment is unimportant clinically from the lateral side of palmar aponeurosis a second fibrous septum passes obliquely and uh, it is again uh, backward attached to the anterior border of third metacarpal usually the septum passes between the flexor tendon of index and middle finger and the second septum divides the palm into thinner space which lies lateral to the septum and uh, this forms the mid palmar space which lies medial to the septum proximally the thinner and uh, mid palmar spaces are closed off from the forearm by the walls of carpal tunnel distally two spaces are continuous with uh, the lumbrical canals the thinner space contains first lumbrical muscle and it lies posterior to long flexor tendon of uh, index finger and it is in front of abduct adductor adductor pollicis muscle uh, the mid palmar space contains second third and fourth lumbrical muscle and it lies posterior to long flexor tendons to uh, middle ring and little finger it lies in front of interosseae and uh, in front of third fourth and fifth metacarpal bone whereas the lumbrical canal is a potential space surrounding the tendons of lumbrical muscles and is filled with connective tissue proximally it continues with uh, one of the palmar space now the facial spaces of the palm are clinically important because uh, they can become infected and uh, distended with a pus as a result of spread of infection in acute suppurative tenosynovitis and uh, or it may also be infected by penetrating wounds here uh, most important is the pulp space of finger as shown in third figure the deep fascia of the pulp of each finger fuses with the periosteum of terminal phalanx just distal to the uh, insertion of long flexor tendon and um, it forms facial compartments known as pulp space each pulp space is then divided by presence of numerous uh, septa and uh, these septa uh, pass from the deep fascia to periosteum and through the pulp uh, space uh, which is filled with fats runs the terminal branch of digital artery that supplies diaphysis of terminal phalanx the epiphysis of distal phalanx receives its blood supply proximal to the pulp space it is very important fact uh because it has got clinical significance now the pulp space infection of the finger is known as vitlo or felon and um, the pulp space of finger is closed facial compartment uh, situated in front of terminal phalanx of each finger and infection of such space is uh, very painful and uh, also common it occurs uh mostly to the thumb and index finger and uh 
bacterial infection is again uh, common here there is accumulation of inflammatory exudate into the compartment and it causes pressure in the pulp space as there is unyielding space it is tightly uh, or it is a compact compartment we can say and if the infection is left without decompression or uh, infection of the terminals phalanx can also occur and in children the blood supply to diaphysis of the phalanx passes through the pulp space and the pressure on blood vessels can result in necrosis of the diaphysis and the proximally located epiphysis of this bone is saved because it receives its arterial supply just proximal to pulp space so uh, necrosis is common in distal part and uh, epiphysis is paired epiphysis is paired because it receives blood supply uh, proximal to the pulp space but necrosis occurs in the diaphysis and the close relation of proximal end of the pulp space to the digital synovial sheath also accounts for involvement of the sheath in infectious process when the pulp space infection has been neglected this slide has two figures first figure is of duprin's contracture and second figure is of wokman's contracture so first we will see what is duprin's contracture so it is progressive fibrosis of ulnar side of palmar aponeurosis resulting in shortening and thickening of fibrous bands that extend from aponeurosis to the little finger and ring finger a uh, pull exerted by these bands draw the finger towards palm ring finger is most commonly affected and it is again more common in men over 40 years of age proximal and middle phalanges are acutely flexed because the fibrous bands are attached to them and the distal phalanges remain extended as the fibrous bands are not attached to them and surgical resection of palmar aponeurosis is required to treat this clinical condition now the second uh, figure is of wokman's contracture it is also known as wokman's ischemic contracture it is clinical condition characterized by fibrosis and contracture of muscles of forearm the flexor muscles are more affected it occurs due to ischemia and degeneration Uh, due to interference with the blood supply and common causes are injury to the brachial artery as in uh, supracondylar fracture or compression of the brachial artery due to extended or improper use of tourniquets or tight plaster cast and bandage here the signs and symptoms are initially there is pain aggravated by passive extension of fingers and as the condition is aggravated or it is progressed there is flexion of interphalangeal joint of fingers which are partially extended when the wrist is flexed uh, usually flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus are more severely affected in wokman's contracture and the deformity of the hand in contracture is typical and it presents as flexion in the wrist extension at metacarpophalangeal joint and again flexion of interphalangeal joint first figure in this slide is de quervain's disease and second figure is of fracture of scaphoid so now we will see what is de quervain's disease it is a tenosynovitis and it is a painful condition mainly affecting the tendons of thumb side and chronic overuse of the wrist is associated with de quervain's disease tendons of abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis are affected they are rope like structures that attach the muscle to the bone the, uh, when you grip grasp or clench or pinch anything in your hand the two tendons of abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis in the wrist and lower thumb normally glide smoothly through the small tunnel that connects them to the base of thumb repeated uh, uh, 
ओवर यूज वी कैन से रिपीटेड यूज और ओवर यूज और पर्टिक्युलर मोशन वेन इट इज डन रिपीटेडली देर विल बी इंजुरी और इन केस ऑफ र्यूमेटोइड अर्थराइटिस देर इज इरीटेशन ऑफ द शीत कवरिंग दीज टू मसल्स एंड दी वेन द देर इज इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ द शीत अराउंड द टेंडेंस कॉजिंग थिकनिंग स्वेलिंग और रिस्ट्रिक्टेड मूवमेंट द पेशेंट प्रेजेंट्स विद पेन स्वेलिंग नियर द बेस ऑफ द थम एंड इट इज ट्रीटेड बाय इमोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ द थम एंड रिस्ट कीपिंग स्ट्रेट विद स्प्लिंट और ब्रेस नाउ द सेकेंड फिगर इज ऑफ स्केफोइड फ्रैक्चर सो स्केफोइड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कार्पल बोन इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर मोशन एंड स्टेबिलिटी इन रिस्ट जॉइंट स्केफोइड फ्रैक्चर कॉजेज टेंडरनेस और पेन इन एनाटोमिकल स्नफ बॉक्स एंड इट ऑकस ड्यू टू फॉल ऑन आउट स्ट्रेच हैंड एंड पेन इज वेरी सीवियर वेन यू मूव द थम और रिस्ट एंड और वेन यू ट्राई टू पिंच और ग्रास्प something since uh, the scaphoid receives blood in retrograde fashion from distal to proximal side a uh, vascular necrosis of proximal segment can occur because the blood supply to proximal segment of the bone uh, entirely enters through distal pole thus if there is a fracture at the waist of scaphoid then it disrupts the flow of blood to the proximal segment and thus it is deprived of blood supply and it results in a septic a vascular necrosis the two figures in this slide are of mallet finger and trigger finger in mallet finger uh, the patient presents with painful swollen distal interphalangeal joint with finger flexed at distal phalanx and there is inability to fully extend the finger at distal phalangeal joint uh, the mallet finger is injury of terminal extensor at the level of distal interphalangeal joint resulting in dropped finger or baseball finger this condition is caused by tendon dis disruption or uh, bony avulsion of insertion site of terminal extensor tendon and this injury commonly results due to sports trauma cut injuries and the fracture at dorsal aspect of the base of distal phalanx is associated with palmar subluxation of distal phalanx and it is treated by immobilization of distal interphalangeal joint in extension by using splint the second figure is of trigger finger here the patient presents with finger stiffness in morning then there is popping or clicking of the finger there is tenderness or nodule at the base of affected finger uh, catching or locking in bent position is seen so the trigger finger is uh, stenosing tenosynovitis the flexor tendon sheath that holds the flexor tendons are affected and it occurs when inflammation narrows the space within the flexor tendon and the flexor sheath that surrounds the tendon and the tendons are uh, fibrous cords that attach muscle to the bone and they are surrounded by protective sheath as we know which uh, when inflamed interferes with normal gliding motion of the tendons through the sheath so the fingers get locked in flexion and extend on excessive voluntary efforts so that is known as trigger finger slide we can see bottonnier deformity and swan neck deformity so first we will see the bottonnier deformity it is the deformity of uh, finger in which the proximal interphalangeal joint is flexed and distal interphalangeal joint is hyper extended it is due to volar subluxation of lateral band and it is also referred as button hole deformity it may develop secondary to rheumatoid arthritis or direct laceration to the extensors burns or congenital defect may be there 
so uh, when there is direct injury to the central slip of extensor digitorum it leads to failure of extensor mechanism so your patient presents with loss of extension at uh, proximal interphalangeal joint but there is hyper extension at distal interphalangeal joint so the finger at proximal interphalangeal joint cannot straighten and the finger at distal interphalangeal joint cannot be bent so there is weak grip inability to grasp then pain and swelling occurs in the middle joint of the finger now we will see the second figure or second deformity it is of swan neck deformity it develops uh, from either loss of extension at distal interphalangeal joint or uh, tightening or over pull of extensor mechanism on proximal phalangeal joint in this deformity the joint at the base of finger bends in flexion proximal interphalangeal joint is hyper extended and distal interphalangeal joint bends in flexion here again the common cause is rheumatoid arthritis or there can be laxity of fibrous plate or ligaments at the base of finger then muscle spasticity ruptured tendon or there can be misaligned uh, fracture of middle bone of the finger and it is a result of imbalance of extensor mechanism of the digits this slide we will study boxer's fracture and bennett's fracture so boxer's fracture is the fracture in the neck of fifth metacarpal bone in the hand it occurs due to high speed punch and there is pain swelling near the knuckle over the ulnar side and limited movement uh, misalignment of little finger is seen it is treated by budding tapping and uh, tensor bandage reduction and splinting the second slide or second figure is of bennett fracture it is the fracture of base of thumb it results from forced abduction uh, at first metacarpal joint so uh, due to sports or fall or accident uh, there can be fracture at first metacarpophalangeal shaft and it subluxates dorsally proximally and radially due to the pull of abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis here the patient presents with visible deformity there is pain and swelling over carpo metacarpal joint and there is a decreased pinch grasp and grip strength it is treated by spica cast for 3 to 4 weeks and it can be operated means so operative treatment is recommended for uh, unstable fractures in this slide we will study two deformities skier's thumb or gamekeeper's thumb and jersey finger so first we will see what is skier's thumb uh, it is acute partial or complete rupture of ulnar collateral ligament of thumb at metacarpophalangeal joint due to hyper abduction and extension trauma of the thumb uh, gamekeeper's thumb results from chronic injury to the ulnar collateral ligament attenuated through repeated stress here the patient presents with pain over ulnar aspect of uh, metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb and in acute condition pain and inflammation is there in uh, chronic cases the pincer grip is weak the second figure is of jersey finger it is also known as rugby finger it is uh, caused by traumatic rupture of flexor digitorum profundus tendon at its point of attachment to the distal phalanx so there is inability to bend uh, one or more joints in the fingertip and uh, pain and numbness while bending the fingertips tenderness is there in the palm and it is treated by surgery to reattach the disrupted tendon of flexor digitorum profundus and to fix the bony fracture if any and restore ability to bend the fingertips this figure we can see how the weight is transmitted from appendicular skeleton to axial skeleton so suppose we are holding weight in our hand 
so that force is transferred to the radius through wrist joint from radius through interosseous membrane the force is transmitted to ulna then through elbow joint it passes to the humerus and through shoulder joint to the scapula again uh, laterally there is coracoclavicular ligament it transmits the weight from scapula to the clavicle and from clavicle through sternoclavicular joint and costoclavicular uh, ligament the weight is finally transmitted to the axial skeleton